My name is Christopher, and I will be demonstrating the NetBackup 10.1 malware detection feature for on-demand scans and using the scan status in the recovery workflow to find the last known good image. Let's begin on the web UI dashboard where every user starts. We can see the latest malware scanning results here. The scanning events are sorted into infected, not infected, pending, in progress, and failed, according to the last 24 hours, which is configurable to 48 or 72 hour timeframes. Let's look at the infected events. This automatically presents a filtered view, which we can easily change to also show other detection jobs. For our infected backup images, we may want to take action now. We can expire all copies of this infected image, view the infected files list, or export the list as a CSV. The infected files list presents each file path and file on its own line. Now that we are in the malware detection portion of the web UI, let's orient ourselves. The columns available are client, backup time, scan status, schedule type, date of scan, malware scanner application, and the number of files infected. I have also added some optional columns, such as the backup ID here on the right-hand side for this demonstration. Now let's check our malware detection settings in the upper right-hand side of this pane. We see scan pools with malware application, share type, and scan host. We can manage the individual scan host or delete the scan pool if it is no longer needed or a new malware application is being used. Automatic scans are not a default. You can configure automatic scans for high anomaly scores in a configuration file. But for this demo, we'll now see how to initiate an on-demand scan by clicking Scan Now. Most scans will be manual, targeting high-risk hosts. Select a method to search for an image to scan, either by backup ID, backup type, or protection plan, and select one of the supported workloads, and then enter a date range and other search criteria. Only valid candidates will be displayed. Each individual image will be scanned in its own job. Finally, select a scan pool, and now we're ready to scan. Now we can see a pending scan. In a moment, this will change to in progress. While a scan is in either of these two statuses, it can also be canceled. In the meantime, let's look at a recovery workflow for the existing images and see how the scan status is captured. We can search for our client's images and see in the backup history window that the most recent is not yet scanned and further, we can see which images are infected or not, helping us determine the last known good image, which is the most recent image in the list that is not infected. If we select a restore point that is impacted or infected, we will get several warnings. We also get a warning that some images in the backup history have not been scanned. We can see that in our simple case, the images are all the same number of files and the same size, giving us further confidence that the most recent backup from the same policy is likely good as well. We can return to our malware detection scan and see now that it is completing. The amount of scanning time will vary depending on several factors, including the size of the image and the number of files. In our case, it was a small backup and we are not infected. An infected scan will also appear as a notification in the upper right providing several visible alerts when a cybersecurity response may be warranted, as well as prompting the automatic pause of a client as a result of the malware scan from any further data protection until remediation. For VMware, we can note that the scan status is displayed in the recovery workflows as well, such as during instant rollback, shown here. We can see that malware scanning will offer another important line of defense within the IT ecosystem and capture that scan status when referencing a restore point in order to find the last known good image. Thanks for watching.